The local government minister in South Australia is Jeff Brock. He joins us again in state parliament this week. Jeff, uh, there's been a move by the government to try and sort out, well, look, is it a mess, this disclosure situation that happened with about 40-something councillors and mayors? Well, it, there's been a lot of uh, confusion there and a lot of uncertainty and a lot of um, people that haven't uh, followed the process and which they knew about and the Electoral Commission has given them plenty of uh, advice and also warnings to my information. However, look, um, one of the things that we've been very concerned about if uh, if they go through another uh, supplementary there's going to be a very financial impact on communities out there and specifically small regional communities with councils but some of them already having a supplementary at the moment because in the general election there weren't enough uh, nominations there so they're, they're having a supplementary now and if we had have gone through as per the uh, the legislation was under section 54 they would have had to have another one coming after the supplementary which is another financial impact look we've uh, we've made the decision and uh, it was a letter from uh, Dean Johnson, the president of the local government association. Uh, they asked us uh, to actually uh, get some sort of a solution for it. So we put the bill through the lower house yesterday. Uh, and that basically um, it just says that these 45 uh, people um, it's act as if they haven't um, been disqualified at this particular point. However, it's it's got to get through the upper house. And once it gets through there uh, and then it's uh, signed by the governor, uh, then they've got 10 days to get their their disclosure reports in uh, to the electoral commissioner. And if they don't get it in in that 10 days following the first, basically got 24 days, 25 days from here, uh, if then in actual fact they will be disqualified and have to go to SACA. But I guess just working back through what you're talking about there and the principles here, I mean, first of all, you're adamant that they did receive adequate notice through the electoral commissioner or otherwise that they had to make this disclosure? Yes, I look, uh, that's um, the communication from the Electoral Commission was that, look, um, it's happened for various reasons. There's a lot of uh, um, various uh, not excuse, but reasons why they couldn't, may not be able to do it. There could have been personal circumstances. Some are saying they couldn't get onto the portal. Some are saying they didn't get any communication. But look, uh, it's, it's out of, this has never happened before in the local government election since that was the, instigated in 1999 and uh, they've had all these elections and nothing has happened nothing like this has happened before but uh, the legislation previously was changed that they took it away from local government and in actual fact uh, the disclosure or the nominations were not in the uh, the public arena until the last minute uh, with the the current situation. And secondly, the uh, the disclosure forms uh, they had to put another one under this new legislation that was in from the previous time. Uh, then, but the the disclosure forms for uh, any gifts, uh, whether they're over five hundred dollars or under five hundred dollars, you had to put either nominated if it was over five hundred dollars, put a report in uh, disclosing who it was. And if you got none uh, under anything under no something under five or nothing under 500 you had to put a new one in for transparency so that normally would have gone to the elector to the uh, CEO of the councils but it was changed under in 2021 but we're going to get uh, we've, we've, we want to move forward this we want to save our communities uh, these are the people that were elected for various reasons they didn't uh, comply with the the time frames of uh, the uh, the requirement under the, the current act but we're making it quite clear now that uh, once we, we set these up if they don't uh, put their disclosure forms in um, within 10 days after it, the governor signs it, which was said it'll be about uh, two weeks today, and in actual fact, um, the, the, this, this, they won't be in there. So we've, they've got plenty of opportunities now. We want yeah. to save the communities that the, 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 the impost, the financial impact of having another supplementary, which then if it's thirty or $40,000, whatever it may be, then in actual fact, that's, that amount of work is not going to be done in their communities. But there's, is there a precedent here if a state MP doesn't fill out their disclosures, they had trouble fill, you know, accessing the portal to do it, that to save them the cost of a by-election which just gives them more time to make the disclosure? No, no. Look, uh, so I, can, I don't know about the power the party the, the, the major parties work. They might do it all for their candidates, but as an independent myself, uh, I had to, leading up to the last state election, I had to, on a regular basis, I think it was, uh, I think it was every week in actual fact, I had to put one in through the portal. Yeah, and OK, well, I had a bit of problems starting to get into the portal because uh, of the, the bit of uh, uh, problems there. But what we did was we actually rang the, uh, the Electoral Commissioner and the Electoral Commissioner guided us through and then uh, got us, make, made us uh, so we could get through the portal and, uh, and comply with the regulations. And if I hadn't have done that, I, would have, uh, I wouldn't have had the, uh, the opportunity, the extra opportunity like we're giving these uh, 45 can- uh, candidates. But certainly it would have been the same thing for uh, state elect- uh, elect- um, 
candidates. But I can only talk about an independent, Ricky. I don't know how to make it. Yeah, I get what you're saying there as an independent, but it just does seem to set a bit of an, an unhealthy precedent, doesn't it? That if people, if you're saying that they got a lot of opportunity to make their disclosure and they didn't do so, well, because there's a collective number of them that didn't, well, we'll give them an extra 10 days to clean it all up. Well, uh, Ricky, there were some various um, excuses out there, and, and as I said, there's some people have already gone to SACAC, which is the, uh, the independent tribunal that they can go to, and they'll make a decision whether they did. But there's the financial impact that the government was concerned about. It's the financial impact that uh, President of the Local Government Association was uh, concerned about. But I can just reassure people that I am disappointed, and I'm sure everybody else has, has got this, this situation. But we're going to have a review. Uh, the Electoral Commission will have a review after the, the election. We will also have a review review and then make certain and we'll we'll consult I'll consult with people and, and the candidates and things like that to make certain that uh, if whatever has happened and uh, when we got through the uh, the parliament yesterday uh, there was a, probably six or seven members so uh, two or three from the opposition and four whatever it's from the government side talking and uh, they they made some good comments there so Look, this is a once-off. This is not. Going, this is only for this particular period of time, and then afterwards it reverts back to. And we'll look at the local government act to make certain to ensure that this does not happen again. Now you mentioned these reviews. You've talked about those before. The opposition that you've just talked about there, they've said they still want an independent inquiry into all of this. How open and public and transparent will these two reviews by the commissioner and yourself be? Well, look, let's uh, let's get through this first up here. We we have to have the review but I haven't got to the situation where what we're going to do at this particular point but what I want to do is to be able to make certain we do it right and and I'm going to be consulting with the local government association very clearly they are looking after the sector and also as I say what the the uh, electoral commissioner is independent of the parliament independent of everybody as is with the ICAC commissioner and the ombudsman and also the uh, SACAC commissioner but I will keep you informed as we go along Ricky and how we're going with that review. Fantastic and just to be clear to finish off uh, there's no suggestion I know there was a one council that said they were concerned there were rumours going around that there was something untoward about the disclosures or lack thereof by these councillors we don't know until we see those disclosures whether they had received donations that were questionable or not but it might be a lot of them have nil disclosure well, if they have new, and this is transparency, Ricky, this is transparency. In, in your time in, in the, the political arena with your previous, uh, some years ago, you know that we've got to be transparent and open and, and honest with our communities and specifically with local government uh, candidates, but they need to be very clear. So to the community, especially in smaller communities, they need to be aware that uh, whether, and if people get a donation, they just declare it, you know, and if you get nothing, if you get something under $500, put a new return in because that means to say that you're being honest and transparent with the, the the voters that elected you in that uh, at the general election in November last year, but certainly transparency is the utmost that we want to be able to maintain and to continue that uh, transparency. Jeff Brock is the local government minister and also you know, your veteran affairs minister and a few others, but the independent member for Stuart as well. Thanks for joining us today on Flow, and have a great day and keep cool, everybody.